The protagonist's parents were murdered by a posse of five galactic criminals, the Demon Princes. He vows revenge and eliminates them one by one. Hello and welcome to Liam's Light I'm your host, Liam, aka Hemvar, and today I'll be doing a spoiler free review of Jack Vance's The Star King. The Star King is a 1964 novel by Jack Vance and book one in The Demon Princes, which is a pentology. The novel was originally serialized in Galaxy in 1963 and 1964. The book opens with a tavern, Slade's Tavern, one on the planet of Slade's Maid's Planet. In fact, it is the only settlement on the planet, and is run by a Smade, of course, and he gets all sort of rough figures or peaceful ones alike. It's considered neutral ground in the beyond. Imagine one Northwest Smith or Han Solo might frequent. Included are figures uh, and an alien Star King ship. Kurth uh, meets one Lugo T. Halt, who tells Kurth of a planet he discovered. When T. Halt learns who his boss is, he is scared his planet will be plundered. A scuffle happens and Gerson's ship is stolen on accident. That's Keith Kurth, Keith Gerson. Wow, sorry. As it's the same model as uh, the target ship. Uh, using this other ship, he's able to locate the planet with its coordinates. And from there, he then discovers, or tries to discover, T. Halt's boss's identity. The plot is a basic revenge story. Uh, Kurth Garrison tracks down the first of five arch criminals that, well, massacred the people of his colony world that he grew up on. This was when he was a child, and he has now set out on this goal, finally. And he was taught to kill for vengeance by his grandfather, who took him to Earth. The Star King Adel Maligate is his enemy in this one. Uh, the character's name was Grindel the Monster in the serialized versions. Um, he is an evil man in Kurt's first target, like I said. Uh, now what evil means is a little nuanced, too. He's at least a criminal, definitely out for himself, and he seems pretty successful at making money. The Star Kings are an uh, alien race that mostly resemble humans as they mutate quickly to imitate the dominant species around them. This means an investigation is in order. As Kurth is a hard and cunning and cautious man, he's also a good killer, uh, one that survives people trying to kill him. Uh, Vance does beg the question whether this uh, victim-turned-predator is actually a hero. I think it, you'd be hard-pressed to say our main character is a hero here. Uh, we do get world-building throughout. In fact, the prelude... Um, the continuation of Kurth's quest, um, we get like an interesting point, but there are convergent and divergent evolution in this book, and it's discussed as well. Policing the galaxy and so-called weasels, um, there's also different cultures of different planets. And these, with along with the good pacing, make up for what is in some ways a bland revenge story. Uh, and these revenge stories can be done well. I mean, look at the Count of Monte Cristo. Um, this is much shorter than that, though it is five book series that you could probably put into one book for today because they're all rather short books. And I, I think Vance is a talented writer. I've read several books by him at this point. I personally enjoy his worlds, uh, which make great backdrops. His characters are generally fun. Uh, they're recognizable as similar to us and also kind of odd in most cases. Uh, this shows itself in various humans and also the aliens. Uh, one woman said she expected to marry her older brother, for example. Uh, there's also epigraphs and footnotes in this book. Uh, they're nice touches. Uh, these epigraphs in particular are really well done from in-world uh, like text. Um, themes of identity come up too in a similar vein to something like Empire of Exiles by Aaron M. Evans or maybe even a little bit of Consider Phlebas by Anna, Ian M. Banks. Uh, Vance is humorous compared to many earlier and contemporaries of himself. Um, and so that's always appreciated too. Though it doesn't, you know, make me laugh out loud. It's still just kind of a humorous story overall. But there's definitely a surrealistic world building as well. It's very much not boring. Uh, and it's very, it's done very well and fast paced anyways. It's noteworthy that in the 60s, New Wave, um, science fiction was kind of battling traditional sci-fi. And Vance wrote really neither of those. He's neither New Wave or traditional sci-fi. Uh, he comments on social and political matters uh, and was traditional in some ways, but he was humorous and flamboyant with his own styles and themes as well. Uh, this is about 1,500 years in the future, for those who are interested in that. Um, and it's just a taste of what's going to come in the next four books. At this point, I've actually read the first three, but I am looking forward to finishing the series. Um, there's one poor part of the book, um, and that is kind of where the role women play. They're not as absent as this, you would say in like Foundation by Asimov, but they're essentially plot devices. It kind of makes it feel like a James Bond movie in that case. Uh, and many of Vance's books were apparently edited in ways he didn't care for, and the Spatterlight editions 
have his preferred text for this novel if you are looking to get a copy of this today. This may be my least favorite Vance book that I've read, though. I've quite enjoyed his others, uh, such as all the Dying Earth books and the Leoness books, uh, but I am looking forward to finishing this series and reading more by him, as he is definitely someone worth your time. This feels kind of straightforward and in the style of the day, um, but there's some stuff to think about if you're paying attention, and it's it's not bad entertainment either. Anyways, Liam from Liam's Ice, I'll catch you next time.